Well, tubers, <clears throat> while we're here on the new lease, we got a little bit of a problem to work on. Got a problem here with my oil and water separator. I've explained how these work before. I've got a couple of videos on them. Uh, I'll try to link them in the description. But we got a problem here. The uh, water oil level should be roughly in the middle. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly. And this one is all the way full of oil. That means that it's got a pretty good chance it's probably pushing at least a little bit of oil through the water side all the way over to my water tank. And we don't want that because it'll eventually get pumped back into the ground. And uh, well, that's certainly a waste of money to throw away what you, uh, what you produce. So dummy me with my new GoPro here. I put it on time-lapse instead of normal video so it didn't have any audio with it. But basically I'm just walking around here talking about the separator and uh, the dump valve here, the red valve at the bottom, is for one reason or another is not shutting when it is shut mechanically. Uh, it still has water go through it when it's shut. And that's basically what our problem is. It's not shutting off so everything is going out the water dump valve to the water tank. Also, as I was talking about, I've got to do an introduction to these new leases before we sort of start the official series of this new lease. Uh, and it's just been raining too much. It's been too wet, and I've got to get out there with a four-wheeler or something and drive around. I want you to sort of have a, a visual understanding of where everything is and remember the places and the roads and whatnot. But anyway, we're going to kind of put this out ahead of, ahead of schedule or whatever. Okay, so I went and turned all the wells off so we don't have any more fluid coming into this, into this separator. And I've shut this valve. And so that isolates. It shouldn't have any pressure on this. Uh upstream and then i'm going to take my poly pipe clamp or poly squeezer excuse me and we're going to go right out there and squeeze the poly off now i've showed these things a few times before which are kind of it's kind of surprising they work i guess and uh i lost you anyway so i'm going to show you again real quick this is just a homemade thing out of a piece of inch and a quarter brass pump barrel and we're going to take these nuts and bolts and just pinch it off as a wannabe machinist you think I'd build a long socket or something I could put on my impact wrench it sure would make this easier Oh my goodness. The nut has rotted off the end of this. And if we look in the end, you can see it's supposed to have a, a nut on here. Now, in the old days, the guts of these, which this one's plastic, and I'm not sure what this one is. It might be stainless. The guts of these are always cast iron and they didn't last long they'd last maybe a year or two you know if you didn't make much water they might last longer than that but they were not a long-lived item <sighs> well these used to always just have a plain steel fine thread three it's nut on them and it was never a problem because the nut always lasted as long as the cast iron guts would 
Well, then we started going to stainless, and the problem with stainless is, is that the internals are a thousand dollars, and that's I don't know what these cost. I don't, they're not, but maybe two or three hundred bucks, or three or four hundred. I don't remember. I'll find out when I get a bill. Well, we went to stainless guts, and then what would happen, and this is what has happened here, um, is that the nut will rust and rot away and be gone. It's like this. It's just completely not there. Okay, we got to do a little bit of magic of editing here because I can't get the bolts out of this, and y'all are going to know more about this than I am right now talking about it, but we'll go home and take it apart and then come back here. So, <clears throat> you need to know how this thing works. This, this piece, I should have should have videoed coming apart this piece sits right in here uh, this just sort of sits flush I'm not gonna drive it in there because it's hard to get out the fluid comes in here it goes in the sides of this plastic housing and then when this is open it comes out the bottom of this housing around this is sort of a bell shaped here there's room for it to go around this little washer at the bottom and it goes out the bottom of the valve when you pull up on this which is run by the top when you twist this it pushes or pulls on this rod when you pull up on this it shuts the valve the first thing we notice is this nut was gone but there's more to it than that if you look down in this housing this housing is corroded and rotted and gone you can see the lip where this is supposed to sit this, this lip right here has got a gasket. It's supposed to seal against that machine ring in the bottom. But you can see there's a significant part of that is gone. And so what that was allowing to happen is the water was actually able to go around this thing and on down the line. It didn't, this couldn't shut it off. And so what I think probably happened is I explained for a while these had steel nuts on the bottom of them. And that was a problem because these new plastic or stainless guts would outlast and outlive this nut. The nut rots, this falls off, this fits perfectly on the end of a piece of two inch tube in their nipple, and it would just fall right in there on the nipple and plug it up. What I think probably happened last night is that this thing was probably all the way shut and 99% of the water that needed to go through this valve was simply going around here. You know, this thing was all the way shut and it was just holding enough pressure back to make the separator work. And the oil level started creeping down because there was too much water going through it, couldn't keep the oil level up. The float is pulling down, you know, the float is sinking, which is pulling up on this, and this nut was almost rotted off until it got a bunch of weight. The float pulls harder than you think it would until it finally pulled this up and through the, through the bottom. So anyway, we got pretty lucky that this didn't cause a disaster. Well, let's stick this sucker back on there real quick. I made a mistake here, I just realized. This nipple is a six inch nipple instead of an eight. And so this isn't gonna line up. I'm gonna have to dig that out. I don't have a shovel. Uh, probably just gonna have to go get a shovel. In case y'all were wondering here, this is sand that's all on the ground. I actually had a hole in this separator a month or so prior to this, and I'll show the video kind of when we get to it here in a few months. But I had the inside of this sandblasted and coated, and that's what all this sand is from, is from the sandblasting. actually start you'll see how easy that thing started it's always a pain Okay, by 
putting this on here you can see I'm taking this float and moving the float out of its you know where it's trying to float I'm forcing it up I just want to make that point because I'm gonna start this up and y'all probably going to be able to see this thing sort of go through equal go to equilibrium and uh, I just wanted you to know that though the oil level is going to move the floats probably gonna stay stationary because we've got it sort of in a bind right now Definitely gonna be a problem. Let's see if I can bend this right out of the way. Oh, yeah, that ought to do it. That was a float. I pushed the float down or up so far. I pushed this down and float up. That the float hit the top of the separator. I don't want to crash it. Crash it too hard. Okay, I can open this valve. Let me go pull the uh, poly squeezer thing off real quick. All right, I'll put a fresh battery in the camera. This thing's ready to go. I'm going to crank the wells up on my phone. I promise all these computer videos are coming. I just hadn't had time to work on them. All right, the two wells just took off. And uh, I'm just going to leave you. And I'll come back and get this camera later, and I'm going to run this in super fast motion. Uh, you can see the pressure gauge is 10 pounds, straight up is 30. Uh, the sight glass, you should, should be able to see the water level come up. And then this should move to open this valve. Um, I'm going to let it run in super fast motion, and y'all be able to watch this. This sight glass is dirty. They are uh, often full of crap, hard to see. I can spot the line, it's right there. This is just crap in the tube. Right, right there. It might be a little bit higher than I want it. We shortened this nipple so it probably took a little bit of slack out of this rod. I may adjust this just a little bit I guess I should have stated but this this rod here this linkage is how you adjust the uh, the level of the uh, the oil level in it set it back where it was but I moved it to the right side so it's kind of lined up yeah the water duct valve is opened on up so the pressures came down and everything's going to the water tank and as the oil level comes down this will float up and slowly shut the valve and that will cause a pressure rise which will open this valve and put oil in the tank it has quick kicking oil i think we're good to go i also got a camera right there i can log into and i can actually zoom in and make out this this sight glass